Hey, Pit Masters, what's up? Today we're going to be making the best onion soup you ever had. My fondest onion soup memories are from these cold winter days when your heart, hands start feeling numb and you're getting cold to the bone. And then eating a warm bowl of onion soup with crusty bread and cheese melting all over it. That is the best you can have to re-energize, warm up. But you need a good onion soup because everybody hates a bad onion soup. Martian, do we need to discuss the things that happen when you eat onion soup? There is a big plus to eating onion soup and there's a big minus to eating onion soup. And let me just put it this way. Onion soup has a tendency to, I don't know, help your digestion. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think that, well, I don't know how to say this, Morrison. No, yeah, but in between, the, like... Oh! Denise, do you eat onion soup? Never. Never? Oh my God. Never, never, you never ate onion soup? Never. No, seriously, never, ever. Never. Never in your whole life you ate onion soup. We need to fix this right now. For me, onion soup doesn't start with onion. That sounds weird, right? But it's really important that you start your onion soup with a good broth. Now, I'm not gonna make broth for you guys. It's a long process. You can buy a good broth. And we found one that has been cooking for 96 hours in total. So it's really rich. So whatever you do, go looking for a good, good beef broth. I have four liters of this broth and it's absolutely amazing. We're going to make it even better though because this is my secret to a good onion soup and that is adding barbecue flavor. We're going to add meat. This is our flat iron. This is our beef shank and we're going to be cooking it in the barbecue adding a lot of flavor to it. So let's fire up our barbecue. You want to use the Big Joe or shall we use uh, our new classic? Nothing better than a fresh grill in the morning to make onion soup. Look at how shiny it is. Woohoo! Probably gonna take a few hours until we make it dirty again. That's what happens when you use your grill. First we'll put in our favorite charcoal, our Kamado Joe Big Block. We'll fill it up halfway and light it up with our fire starters. And this is where the magic happens. We're going to add a chunk of smoke wood. In this case we're using pecan because that's what I have laying around. But you can use other things like beech tree, you can use oak. We want heavy flavors because we want to taste it in our soup. Now we'll put the grill grates in, put our beef shanks on, our flat iron, and while smoking the meat, we're going to let it roast until we get a nice caramelized outside. We're not looking to cook this, we're just looking to add flavor. Now if you don't own a grill or you want to make this in your kitchen, of course you can. Just put the meat in a tray and roast it nice and hot at a temperature of around 200 degrees Celsius for around 20 minutes or so or until you get a beautiful caramelization on the outside of the meat. Our meat picked up smoke flavor and we grilled it to make sure that we get a good bit of caramelization. A nice bit of color on the meat. Look, a little bit of red from that smoke, a little bit of char from the flames, and that's all flavor. Now we can add it to our beef broth. It's getting hot in here, so take out all your grills. Getting, getting. All right, now we're going to lower the temperature. Whoa, who put the grill here? Now we're going to lower our temperature in the grill. Make sure that we get it to a nice simmering heat of around 100 to 110 degrees Celsius. So we're just getting that boil in our beautiful beef broth with which we now enrich it with all that gorgeous meat. Just put it in the grill. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be fine. Put the lid on. And now we're going to close the lid of the barbecue and control the temperature with the bottom and the top vent. Wait, 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 I forgot the best part. I had this in my freezer. And these are the bones from a beef roast. So basically the ribeye was here, we roasted it. It was fully cooked, seasoned and everything. And it's just laying here. I kept it in my freezer. 
we're going to add this to our beef broth as well. It's going to add more flavor. And that's why we save the scraps, that the things that we otherwise would get rid of. Save them for the moment you need to enhance your beef broth or make a completely new beef broth. So we're just gonna add this to the pan. Ooh, yeah. We slow cooked our beef broth and our meat for four hours. Let's see how tender it is right now. The pan looks a little bit different now though. But hey, it's the inside what we're looking at. Wow, look at that succulent meat. It's just falling apart. Uh, look at that, this is why we love that flat iron, that stuff that's in the middle. It's gonna fall apart. It's gonna be super tasty in our soup. And that's why our onion soup is the best. I let our broth cool down a little bit and now I'm going to tear everything up with my hands. Just making it into little bits and all these bits of goodness. Don't leave out that fat, just tear it up into really small bits and it's gonna be amazing in this soup. Basically I'm just pushing it through my fingers and treating it like pulled beef. Look at that bone. <laughs> it's falling off the bone, just stripping it clean. Nice and clean bone and a lot of flavor came out of that. I can promise you that. See, we got some bone marrow here. Let's get that out. Let's make sure that's in our beef broth and then tear everything up. Just keep going. Careful that you don't burn your hands. There we go. Look at that. That's gonna be goodness at the bottom of our onion soup. Now we're getting to my favorite part of the show, the taste test. Of course, in between, you gotta make sure the quality is good. Quality check, you know, important. It's like beef broth, but then 10 times better. You get that barbecue flavor, that smokiness, that crunchiness, that it's not crunchy at all, but it, it's, 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 the, it's the caramelization that you get on the outside of your meat. It's all in there. And I can just already imagine having this as a base in the onion soup. Now that all this work is done, we're getting to the next phase of our onion soup. And Denise already started cutting onions and you're not crying. You know why? Because she's using a mandolino. Look at her perfect cutting skills. She's working it like a trooper. Back in my days, we did it by hand. Notch knife, cutting it. Nowadays, the millennials do it with a mandolin. I didn't even know what this was. Well, I thought it was safer for you to do it this way. Don't want you to lose your hands. All right, I was talking about the next part, onions. We need to brown our onions. Yes, we're gonna go a little farther and then just making them nice and shiny. We're gonna make them brown. And for that, we're gonna need a cast iron pot. Yeah, the one we seasoned. <laughs> Look at it, what a beauty, right? Now, these Dutch ovens, they have legs at the bottom. So putting them on a grill grate, not such a great idea. Especially with the heat and a lot of soup on it. It might fall down into the fire, into the barbecue. And you don't want to know what happens then. So we're going to take out the grill grates and we'll put in a little spider. We'll put this at a lower position. There we go. And we still have enough charcoal left to heat up our pan and put in the onions and turn it nice and brown. Look at that. It's like a marriage. It's made for it. It's just sitting in there perfect and it can't go anywhere. So we're safe, we're good. We'll preheat our pan and then put in 25 grams of butter. We'll put in our onions and fill that pan all the way up. We used almost two kilograms of onions. Look at that. That's gonna be one big onion show. The onions reduced and they're getting darker and darker. And at the end, you gotta keep stirring because we're looking for calmer, car 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 caramel color, which means we want them a little bit dark brown. Uh, so every time they stick to the bottom of the pan, they get a little bit of that darkness. You need to turn them. So the other side gets brown, and so everything gets brown without burning at the bottom. So keep stirring, keep making them brown, and eventually you're gonna hit that sweet spot. Look at the beautiful structure that we developed. Our onions are soft and at the same time holding on to that little bit of structure that's left in there. Now we're going to add one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, 250 milliliters of white wine, and we're looking for a robust dry white wine, like Pinot Grigio. We'll stir it and let it turn into a thick onion gravy. 
Time to add our beef broth. Now, we have to look at our beef broth and see that from four liters, we went down to all the way to two liters. The flavors have become much more intense. And first, we're going to add one liter of this beef broth and see what happens to our onion soup. Now, I'm looking at my onion soup, and this is an important part because I can tell you to put in two liters, or I can tell you to put in one liter, but you have to look at the consistency because that's what ultimately matters. We need a, like almost between a porridge and a soup consistency. We don't want it to be too thin and watery. We need it uh, thick and heavy. But since we know we're going to be cooking it for a little while, we also don't want it too thick at this point because it's going to simmer down a little bit. So we'll add a little bit more, but this is something that you have to do and check with eye, just like making risotto. Put in one liter first, check it, add another half liter, maybe another half liter, and then build it up from there. And congratulations, now you created onion soup. But we need to taste it first. See what happens, see how the flavors developed, how the onion married with the beef. Yes! And thank you, thank you very much for that applause. But we're not done yet. We're not done by a long bit yet. Of course you can quit right now and just eat your soup and enjoy it and it's miraculously good. But we're gonna make it even better. We're going to start by making a bouquet garni. We'll use a little bit of thyme and a little bit of rosemary. Not too much. One twig of rosemary, a couple of twigs of thyme. One clove of garlic, one bay leaf, and then take some butcher's twine and then tie it all together. It's not secured. Well, I wanted to show you guys this awesome trick where I tie everything together. And um, the thing that I did wrong was put my garlic on the outside. I needed to crush it with my hand so it's loose in structure. Then I have to put it in with the bay leaves. There we go. And then put the twigs on the outside and then we'll wrap it together and we'll start to tightly wrap it because what I want to do is we're going to have a package which we can take out easily. We got to make some nuts to make sure that it ties together very well, very tightly. And then when the garlic tries to escape, we'll just make another nut at the bottom of it. There we go, securing it. Now look at it. A bouquet garni and look at the rope look how long it is so it's like fishing we we'll put it in our soup and just let it sink in there let it catch its flavors let's do its thing and then in around 10 to 20 minutes all of the flavors from all the fresh herbs are going to spread out through our onion soup and are going to make it even better and at the same time our onion soup is going to reduce a little bit so the flavors are going to enhance even more. And you may have noticed I haven't done any additional seasoning yet because that's what I want to do at the end to make sure that I don't over season my soup. A bouquet gani did its work and we can take it out and dispose of it. Oh, thank you very much bouquet gani. You were awesome. Bye bye, star of the show. Now we're going to taste it again. Yes, we're tasting a lot, I know, but it's important. You're building up your soup. You're like building, it's like building a building. You know, you start with the bottom and you build it all the way up. The soup, same thing. Taste it, try it, and figure it out. Is it any good? Mmm. Yep, more flavor, but we're going to add something salty in there. Let me show you. Two more of my favorite ingredients. Worcester sauce and ketchup mayonnaise. Sweet soy sauce, ABC ketchup mayonnaise. Remind them. Not ketchup mayonnaise, ketchup mayonnaise. Ketchup. One tablespoon of Worcester sauce and one tablespoon of ketchup mayonnaise. We'll stir it up and you can see our onion soup will turn even more dark. Looking good. And to finish it off, two pinches of fleur de sel. And work that pepper mill. We need around a tablespoon of black pepper in it. And I love my pepper, so if you don't love black pepper, that's fine. Just do a little less, like a one teaspoon or something like that. But me, I love my black pepper. Stir it up and we're getting to that finish line, people. Hang in there. 
The reward is really close now. We'll take our pan off the fire. And look at that. What a beauty. That's a work of art. Everybody knows a good onion soup doesn't stop with the soup. Everybody knows you need to have bread and cheese. And me, you know, as a Dutch guy, I got my cheese covered. We got Gouda's on standby. You know what I'm talking about. None of that French uh, Friendship. I said friendship. Morrison. Really, I said friendship. Oh, okay, okay. None of, none of that friendship. Of course, you can add Gruyere if you want to, but let's not be too hasty because everybody puts in a little bit of baguette. And then the problem with that baguette is that it's so big and you put your cheese on it and when you try to put your fork or your spoon into it, because you can eat this soup with a fork, you got a problem because it, the baguette is not going to fall apart on you. So what are you going to do? Well, I got the ultimate solution. We're making croutons. And not just any croutons, garlic croutons. We'll take a baguette, cut it up, nice cube size. By the way, this is how you know your knife is sharp, if you can cut baguette with your non-serrated knife. Baguette does sound French though. Baguette. Yes, but basically we rob the French of their baguette because the Netherlands, we make better bread. Morrison, you know this. Come to the Netherlands for your bread and cheese. That's why we never make our own burger buns. They're just too good in the store. Chop fine some parsley, chop fine two cloves of garlic, put them in a bowl, add five tablespoons of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, add it to the bread chunks, mix it up really well and make sure that all of that flavor is soaked up by the bread. This is gonna be good. Now it's time to roast it. Just gonna place these croutons on the grill grates. We got a lot of distance between the charcoal and the bread. This ensures they won't burn. Spread them out so they all catch a little bit of heat and then just wait for the magic to happen. Young Gouda cheese! This is the gold that comes from the Netherlands. That's all we got. That's it. That's our riches. Take off the outsides and start grating that cheese. Ah, it fell off. We got our cheese ready, we got our onion soup ready, we got our croutons ready. Mm. We can't be eating everything all the time. There's nothing left at the end. Ah! I think we got everything. I think we're ready. I think it's time for the assembly. First, we'll start with a little bit of that soup, the core, the base. Let's get in there. Look at these onions. Look at that beef. Wow, that's all goodness. Make sure we got a good layer of that in the base. Now I also want to make sure I get some of that jus, the juices. This is where we mix it up. We'll start with the cheese. We want some of that cheese to melt into that onion soup without hanging on to the bread. So it's gonna go soaking down all the way to the bottom. Now we'll put the croutons on. Just as a little bit of surprise, I got some nice coarse mustard. Look at that. I'm just gonna hide a little dash of mustard here, a little bit of there, hidden away, and it's gonna taste amazing with that cheese as well as the onion soup. So we don't want too much of it, just as a little surprise in it. Now we'll sprinkle more cheese on top. As a matter of fact, we're gonna put on as much as we can. I think we got it. I think we made the ultimate onion soup. Cheese melting time. So we'll put our bowl back on the grill and let it melt. Close the lid and let the barbecue do its work. Fair warning, onion soup can be extremely hot. So you might wanna wait a couple of minutes. If you can bear it, five minutes would be great. If not, you have the chance that you will have serious mouth burn. This looks so good. <laughs> if you're like me and you like cheese, onion soup croutons, garlic, fresh herbs, cheese, a little bit of mustard, Oh. oh my God, this is just ridiculous. This is food for the gods. A cold winter's day, getting food like this, it's so comforting. It's sweet, a little bit of acidity, but just the, the heavy onion and beef and cheese flavors. Mm. And it's so thick. After you added that, the croutons, it just soaks up all of that onion soup and everything becomes just one big party in your mouth. Good stuff. 
Ah, not good stuff. Amazing stuff. Just crazy, crazy good. I'm really, really happy and excited the way this turned out. This soup is freaking amazing. And I hope sincerely you guys are gonna give it a try because I know you're gonna love it. I know you're gonna think this is amazing. And hey, if you didn't make it, you're just gonna miss out. And you might say, well, onion soup, I don't know, maybe, yeah, but this is the onion soup to make. Forget about all other onion soup, this is the one. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, then leave us a big thumbs up and a... Comment down below. That's right. Big thank you to our patrons and the YouTube members. You guys freaking rock. It's smuggled. And keep on grilling. That's right. That's how we do it. And eat more onion soup. This stuff is going to get me through the winter, man. I swear. How do you like onion soup? It's okay. Very good. It's very good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Garlic croutons. Mm. You answer. Ah, there we go. Ah. Ah. Mm. Mm. Martin, you gotta taste this, bro. Gotta get you a spoon.